today um, is the last cooking um, uh, class in the series um, Soups and Sides. Uh, we've made, uh, uh, we've been together, uh, it's going to be a month now, uh, cooking every week a soup and a side uh, that I uh, hope you guys get to try and enjoy. Uh, every week, my kids look forward to Thursday. They know that for supper, uh, they'll have a warm soup and something uh, nice to eat. So uh, today I've um, alerted the ones that are married and living next door that they'll get a delivery of a soup and side today. Um, we're going to be making a uh, wild mushroom soup and we're going to be preparing on the side a uh, garlic bread that uh, you can serve with uh, the soup. Obviously the soup uh, can be um, modified. I mean, in terms of the ingredients, I'm gonna show you the par version or the non-dairy, non-meat version, uh, but feel free to substitute or um, uh, put instead of water, feel free to put um, um, uh, broth, chicken broth, or even um, a non-dairy uh, uh, milk or creamer can do with uh, as well. It will thicken up a bit the soup. And, um, uh, but for the sake of today, I'm going to show you how to do the non-dairy and non-meat version. I'm going to be using water, but you're gonna see um, we're going to be putting a lot of rich, uh, flavorful ingredients in the soup that um, it's not going to be washed down by water. It's actually going to be really beautiful. It's, um, I would say it's a little bit of a sweet and sour kind of soup. Um, not so much Asian flavors, although we're gonna add a little bit of soya to uh, cornstarch just to thicken the soup, but really um, um, it has a bit of uh, fresh thyme and uh, it calls for dill, uh, but my family prefers uh, thyme. I wanted to send you the true version of the recipe. So I did write down dill, uh, but in my case, I'm going to be using thyme today. Um, and then with the addition of lemon juice and a little bit of um, sherry or dry sherry, I use uh, red wine uh, vinegar instead of the sherry. I think it's more accessible for people. And a lot of the time that's what uh, people have in their pantry uh, or in their fridge. But I think that um, either or uh, you can achieve the same result. So for the wild mushroom soup, I have four different kinds of mushrooms and I'm going to uh, spotlight my counter so I can um, show you a little bit more uh, what I have on the counter. So I have four different types of uh, mushrooms. I'm going to use the regular button mushrooms or white mushrooms. Then I'll, I'll be using some cremini or like what you call brown mushroom. Uh, then I also have some shiitake mushrooms. For the shiitake mushrooms, I've uh, prepped them. It comes with like a stem and the stem is really tough and uh, not something that uh, is, is edible. So I take a knife and I just cut the, and I, it leaves you with like a clean uh, cap. And I'm also going to use what they call oyster mushrooms. So very nice, different texture and different, uh, when you bite into it, the um, shiitake mushroom is going to be a little bit chewier. The oyster mushroom is going to be a bit more soft and give you a little bit more texture. Uh, and then the other ones are going to be your regular. Um, now, uh, I went yesterday, somebody's asking me where I get my mushrooms. So yesterday I went to um, Adonis to buy my mushrooms, but normally when um, when I have more time and especially in the summer and the spring, I get my vegetables at the market. I love to go to the market. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to go out. It actually is a little outing uh, because I love to cook. Going to the market is a special treat for me. Uh, 
I uh, really like the, um, um, I like connecting with the farmers, but also looking at all the beautiful colors, the fruits, the vegetables uh, that are in the market. It just also is a way for me to see what there is that's fresh and that's in season. And then that's the way I build. Or if I go at the beginning of the week, like on a Sunday or on a Monday, I decide what I'm gonna make for the whole week. Or sometimes if I haven't gone in the beginning of the week and I'm getting low and I wanna go just before Shabbat. So I go on a Thursday morning, um, like I said, especially in the spring and the summer and I do a grocery. Uh, then I decide what I'm going to prepare for Shabbat and what I'm going to have for the weekend. So for me, um, that's where I would go. But places like Adonis or larger uh, surfaces, even uh, one that has a lot of variety is the um, uh, Provigo uh, Jean, um, uh, Saint-Jacques. Um, some of the larger or bigger IGAs. But if you want to get nice, beautiful, um, more exotic and uh, different types of mushrooms go to a bigger place uh, or one that would carry some different. Um, um, so in total, uh, in terms of what we're going to be uh, using, it's about two pounds of, um, of uh, mushrooms in total. It doesn't really matter the um, proportion. I'm not going to use as much. Uh, I'm not going to use as much um, oyster or shiitake mushroom as I'm going to be using the white or the brown mushroom. I'm going to concentrate and use more of those regular found varieties, and I'm going to enhance my soup and add the different varieties. I tend not to put portobello mushroom in my soup. I find that even when I remove the inside of the portobello mushroom, it makes my soup too dark and alters a little bit the flavor. And I find it, even if you cook it, I find portobello mushroom is better when you roast it or when you bake it in the oven, it's less chewy as when you, cause really basically it's gonna boil in the soup. And when you boil it in the soup, I don't like really the end result of how, how it becomes or the, the consistency of it, as opposed to the other mushroom. You get a beautiful little bite from the shiitake. You get a velvety kind of uh, softer from the oyster. And then the other ones just cook beautifully uh, in the soup. So those would be my favorite uh, four. At the end though, if you have at the end, if you have those other ones that are long, they look like um, bean sprouts, but they're long, 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 and they have like a little tip at the end, and then they're all bunched up and you cut the base of it, which is normally what's in the ground, and then you just use those ones. They become like little sticks and you see them in the soup and they're a bit more chewy, but delicate. Um, those I couldn't find yesterday, but normally when I make that soup, that kind is what I use. And if I remember, or if I find the name of it, I'll post it on my Facebook page and I'll show you an image of it, but really delicious. Um, and those would be my top five uh, choice of mushrooms that I would be using today. So I'm gonna show you a little bit what I do with my mushrooms. Um, I don't wash them. Uh, I don't put them in water. I, Mushroom is uh, really has a lot of uh, heavy water content in them naturally already and uh, washing them or soaking them in water would make them too watery and lose their bite. So what I do, let me just uh, show you what I do. I'm going to change my view and show you on the counter what I do. So I take the mushrooms. I normally set myself up with, uh, as you can see, I already have a lot of dirt and all my stems from the shiitake mushroom and all the dirt. But what I do really is I take a clean piece of paper towel and I brush my mushroom delicately. It takes like a little bit of the top layer, layer off. I also brush the ends and make sure to remove 
all of the dirt that's inside and they're perfectly clean and ready to be used. So you could see on my napkin, there's dirt that came off from me cleaning um, um, the mushroom. And that is perfectly sufficient. And the way that most chefs um, clean their mushrooms so that they don't become watery and they don't ruin the dish. Um, again, for the shiitake mushrooms, just remove the tough stem by cutting it with a knife. And for the oyster mushrooms, you want to separate the clusters sort of into like individual little mushrooms. So um, in this case, I have like a large individual one. So I don't want a very large piece like that because it's too difficult to eat. So I'm going to sort of do it into three or four parts, depending on what I feel is a good size to scoop up with a spoon. I don't want it too big, but I don't want it too small because I still want to feel the texture and the consistency. But for the ones that are small, just leave them intact. The ones that are very tiny, you can leave like a very small cluster. And then I remove the end part that's a bit tough. And I only leave the actual um, mushroom. And again, this one is a bit big. So this one I cut into three. So I'm going to do that with the other cluster that I have. Again, I pull. If there's a bit of dirt or a tough piece at the end, I cut it off. And again, I continue like that the whole way through. And I cut the ones that are just a little bit bigger, I cut them in half. Half or three or four, depending how big. This one's not very big. So I'm just going to slice it in half. And then it's ready. OK? If anybody has questions again about the mushrooms, let me know. But my mushrooms have been pre uh, prepared. So I've brushed all of those. I've removed all the stems from the shiitake mushroom. I've now cut. Um, oh, I could be referring to the enoki mushroom. Somebody just sent me the name uh, of the um, mushroom. You're probably right. Uh, the names uh, slipped from my mind. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare um, an onion. So I don't have a large onion. So depending on how much this onion gives me, it's about a cup of diced uh, or minced onion. Um, if you have a large onion, it should be sufficient. In my case, I have like a medium. So maybe I'll do one and a half. I just, you just want to get to about a cup of uh, minced or diced, finely diced um, onions, but it doesn't have to be extremely uh, specific. Now, if you don't like onions or you prefer the more subtle taste or um, flavor of the, um, of the um, shallot, then go ahead and do that instead of the um, mushroom. You can also substitute mushroom for um, leeks. Uh, that's a very uh, good um, uh, alternative to the um, onions. Uh, when you're cooking with uh, mushrooms, leeks is a great uh, vegetable to pair it with. So I would do or shallots or uh, leeks or onion. And all together, if you don't want, just add a little bit more uh, garlic. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do one and a half because my onion is a little bit on the smaller side, on the smaller side. Um, but you're looking together for about, um, you're looking for about one cup of minced or diced mushroom, uh, diced um, onion. That's the first thing we're going to be putting in our pot, but we're also going to be doing um, minced or crushed two cloves of garlic. So I'm going to take two cloves of uh, garlic. I've already prepared my garlic cloves. And I'm going to crush the 
So I'm just going to first add the oil and the margarine. So again, if you do the soup and you you make it uh, dairy, then you can add butter instead of the margarine. I'm going to do two tablespoons of uh, olive oil and two tablespoons of margarine. I just like the combination when I'm sauteing the mushroom, the um, um, onions and the garlic, uh, just a um, more smooth kind of uh, result. Um, so again, two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of margarine or butter if you're making again the soup dairy. And all together, if you want to avoid the butter or the margarine, go right ahead and just add um, a little bit more of the oil. Um, so I've turned my pot on. I'm now going to wait for the margarine to uh, melt and um, and for the um, oil and the margarine to, you know, come together. But I'm going to, once it's uh, soft, I'm going to add, and once it's uh, heated, I'm going to add the onion and the garlic. Don't put your um, heat too high, uh, just because you don't want your uh, garlic to burn because that gives it a bitter, bitter taste. The first blue one, 6606. Sorry, answering a question from my daughter. So feel free to send me another chat if you have another question. Okay, so I think I've answered the questions that were sent to me. Oh yeah. Okay. So, I'm, my margarine is already um, melted. So I'm going to add my crushed um, garlic and my onions. I like to put my garlic and onion together, just because when I put my garlic separate in the oil, it tends to burn quickly and cook too quickly. The onion sort of acts as a barrier and prevents the garlic to be by itself in the pot and to burn. So here I am, I'm going to add now my uh, diced cup of onion. So again, it's one cup of, um, and I'm going to reduce a little bit the temperature. This pot tends to heat up quickly. I'm using, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm using an electric pot. Uh, but um, feel free to cook over the sto stove. This is just for the sake of the demonstration and uh, for me to be able to see you guys. Hi, Rita. So, Hello. hi, how are you? Good, good, good to see good. you. <laughs> so I'm making today a wild mushroom soup and garlic bread, and I'll show everybody how to make a quick um, a vinaigrette to serve with the salad. So that's like a complete meal. Um, we've started with the um, wild mushroom soup. So I'm going to be using for the people that are just joining me four different types of mushroom. I'm using white button mushroom, cremini brown mushroom, shiitake mushrooms that I've removed the stem and uh, oyster mushrooms that I've sort of cut into different, uh, uh, you know, I've cut the cluster and make them more uh, bite size. Um, I explained to everybody that I don't use portobello mushroom. I think it makes the soup too dark and uh, the consistency of it is not that great when you um, cook it on the stove. I like more to bake or roast uh, portobello mushroom. We have in our pot two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of margarine. 
Um, I like the combination of the olive oil and the margarine uh, when I'm sauteing the onion and the garlic. And in this soup, it's parved, so I'm only going to be using uh, water. So this adds a little bit of fat, which is important um, when we're cooking with the mushrooms. And once the, um, the goal is to have the onions and the garlic translucent and uh, not burn or not brown. So once they're going to become translucent and a bit more tender, I'm going to be adding the mushrooms. So I'm going to start slicing the mushrooms. You don't want them in small pieces. You still want the soup to have consistency. It's not a soup that's going to be puree. It's a soup that's going to be chunky. You'll have all the, the textures of the different mushrooms and all the flavors of the ingredients that we're putting in. So really delicious um, and uh, fun to serve. Very impressive when you're putting it on the table. It's a fancy soup, uh, fancy enough to even serve on Shabbat and holidays for company because uh, it's very flavorful, uh, but easy enough to make for a weeknight. So my onion and my garlic is already cooked down and looking great. So I'm gonna start adding my mushrooms. So again, uh, for the mushrooms, I did not wash them in water. I brushed them with a clean cloth. Uh, for those of you who are joining me uh, just now, I'm um, um, streaming on Facebook. The video is going to be saved and you'll be able to uh, watch the steps that you've missed. Um, but right now it's about um, two pounds of mushrooms and um, it doesn't really matter the combination, but I'm putting more uh, white and brown mushrooms and less of the other kind. So somebody's asking me to show the inside of the pot. So um, I'm not going to stir. I don't know if you can see the onions. It's just translucent, transparent and soft. I don't want them to brown. And I'm starting to add now the mushrooms that I'm going to saute. I'm just going to give it a stir and show you a little bit more what it looks like. So the margarine all melted down, combining with the oil and it's, uh, it's cooking down beautifully. I don't have my heat too high because I, I really don't want my mushrooms and my onions to burn. I want them to cook down slowly and I want all the juices of the mushrooms to you know, it's going to be what is going to be part of the flavor of uh, the soup. Um, I was explaining to everybody that in my recipe, it calls for dill. And my kids and my husband do not like dill. I love it. And I think it's a really great herb, but uh, not one that they've ever acquired a taste for. And I've always substituted the dill for fresh thyme. So when I make my soup, I'm going to be using fresh thyme, which is really a beautiful herb um, to pair with the mushrooms. But I sent the true recipe, which is um, mushroom soup, which calls for dill. So feel free to substitute as well. If you don't like dill or if you don't even like uh, time. You can omit that completely or you can add another herb. Uh, feel free to just um, use something that you're going to like because uh, what's disappointing is when we put a lot of effort and time into uh, cooking, we, um, we um, and, and then our gang doesn't really like what we've made, it's disappointing more to us than to them. So um, ask questions, know and feel what your guests or what your family loves and, and modify the recipe. A recipe is really just there to give you inspiration and help you, you know, prepare beautiful meals. But I never follow a recipe 100%. I only use it as um, a tool to give me inspiration and to help me. 
it's great for people that don't know how to cook. So if you don't know how to cook, it gives you the quantities and the steps and helps you to prepare and execute that recipe. But those of you who are seasoned, not afraid to make some changes, go right ahead and change water and put chicken broth if you want that soup to be meat or add a bit of cream at the end if you're serving a dairy meal, substitute the margarine for butter. So all those things can be done to actually um, uh, modify the soup with still having a great result. What you can do as well is, like I said, for people, the, the, the recipe calls for dill. So I was explaining uh, my family doesn't like dill, so I use thyme. And I find the soup comes out beautifully with thyme, but some people don't like that herb. So just use what you have on hand, what your family and guests love, and especially these days, we're trying to limit our outings and trying to just do groceries maybe once or twice a week. Some of us order uh, from online sites. So we you know we're limited with what we have. And uh, so just use what you have and be creative. Don't be afraid. This recipe is very forgiving um, and um, very flavorful in itself just by adding all those different mushrooms you're gonna see it's gonna have a very earthy uh, taste and it's going to be beautiful. Uh, at the beginning, I explained that, um, um, so right now I'm, I'm gonna show you, I'm, I've sliced my uh, shiitake mushrooms, I've taken the stem off and I'm just making like, you know, bite-sized kind of pieces and the regular mushrooms I've sliced down as well. And for the oyster mushrooms, I'm going to leave them in little pieces. So it came in like a cluster and I've just removed each little piece of the cluster and made bite size uh, pieces. So if you're, if a piece of the cluster is small enough to be a bite size, leave it like that. If not, just slice it in pieces. So I'm adding all of that into the pot, about two pounds of mushrooms in total. Okay. So I can move that to the side. So just to resume right now, we have one diced onion, um, uh, one, no, sorry, one large, uh, finely minced or diced onion. It has to come up to about a cup of onion and then two cloves of garlic that I minced or crushed. And then a total of a combination of two pounds of mushrooms. And uh, I'm gonna show you again the, what, what's doing in my pot. There we go. I don't know if everybody can see. My mushrooms are cooking down. The onions and the garlic is mixed together. If I show you a little bit, there's not much juice on the bottom. It's just really, the mushrooms are going to start to, you know, have some of their own water and juices come out as they cook down. But I'm going to continue sautéing the mushrooms because the simple um, process of sautéing the mushroom is going to add a lot of flavor to the soup. So right now I'm going to change the view and come back to see all of the beautiful uh, faces. Um, I see some familiar faces, some people that have followed the whole uh, four week uh, series. So again, today is our last um, episode of the series entitled Soups and Sides. So I hope you get to try what we've done in the last month uh, and serve your family and, and friends. I've had some very uh, positive feedback from people that have or been on the live with us or watched the Facebook um, video that's been saved and even some pictures of the soups and the final results of what they've made. So it's great because um, that was the whole point of the, the series is to give us something new that we can cook, something interesting, something different that we can um, prepare for our, our loved ones or our friends and uh, uh, something that's 
tasty but easy to to make so i always want to show you recipes that are not difficult uh, steps or ways that you can alternate the recipe depending on what you have at home and also something that is a bit different that you haven't tried uh, yourself i'm gonna see if i can find a wood wooden spoon it's a bit easier to use the wooden spoon and i think it's gonna make a little bit less noise when i'm stirring so again the mushrooms are sauteing really nice they're continuing to cook i don't have to add anything um, uh, at the beginning i put two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of margarine because i'm making my soup non-dairy and non-meat uh, but just with the liquids that's coming out of the mushrooms it's sufficient we're now going to be adding um it calls for um, sherry or a quarter cup of dry sherry. I'm going to be using red wine vinegar. It's the same result as uh, dried sherry, but more accessible and a lot of people have more of that than the sherry. But whatever you have at home is just to give it that sort of sour kind of little bite that we're gonna feel when we're gonna eat the soup is really great. So it's going to be a mixture of the dry sherry or red wine vinegar and fresh lemon juice. So I'm going to cut my lemon in half. It's about one tablespoon of fresh lemon or fresh lemon juice and a quarter cup of uh, dried sherry. So there's my quarter cup. Now, if you don't want to have that sort of, you know, little kick to the soup, reduce the quantity, or just put lemon juice if you don't have any sherry or any red wine vinegar. I find that it adds a really beautiful uh, depth to the soup um, and um, really a nice addition, something that we're not used to having in other soups. And the mushrooms really tend to that flavor very, very well. So I'm adding to my quarter cup I'm adding uh, one tablespoon of lemon juice. And I'm going to add that mixture. So a quarter cup of, uh, I'm using red wine vinegar and one tablespoon of lemon juice. So all that is going into the pot mm, and it smells really nice. It's really beautiful. So you can feel already, it's like when you add wine to a dish, already you have that like, you know, um, oomph that comes like right to your face. Uh, I guess some of that, um, I mean, if you're using uh, sherry, some of that alcohol evaporating already, but um, really, really nice. And we're gonna use one tablespoon of paprika. And uh, that's going to be for color. So I'm using sweet paprika. You don't want to use anything spicy in that recipe or else it's going to alter the taste. So one tablespoon, it's going to give a beautiful color to the soup. Okay, so one tablespoon of paprika and a um, little bit of ground black pepper. I'm going to use some freshly ground black, pe black pepper. It calls for about half a teaspoon, but you can eyeball it depending on uh, your taste. Make sure that you stir constantly so your mushrooms don't stick to the bottom of the pan. I'm going to show you the difference now that I've added the red wine vinegar and the paprika and the pepper. You're going to see how deep and rich the color, hold on, let me just go to my other view. You're gonna see um, how beautiful and now how deep uh, the color has changed. I mean, even closer, it's a bit red, reddish and uh, more like a darker color than when we started, all the mushrooms are combining. So really, um, uh, easy uh, way to flavor uh, just by adding a couple more in ingredients. Then 
It calls for uh, four cups of water. So I'm just going to get my measuring cup and I'm going to add four cups of water. My measuring cup disappeared. Give me a second. Okay, so I'm going to measure four cups of water. One. Now this soup can easily be uh, doubled. If you use a larger pot, just double your ingredients and the amount of water and your spices and everything else. Easily can make a big pot if you eventually, if we go back to hosting guests and having larger crowds, which I'm praying for all of us to do really soon. So now I've added the uh, water again, um, substitute for chicken broth if you want to do um, uh, a meat soup or if you're serving a meat uh, uh, dinner. And then I'm going to let that uh, boil and I'm going to let it simmer and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. So I'm going to just clean up my um, surface and we're gonna start with the next uh, step. I'm also going to turn on my oven and preheat it at 350 for uh, the garlic bread. So what I'm gonna do, just give me a second for me to clean up and move away all the things that we're not gonna use. Okay, so we're gonna start while the soup is boiling. It's actually still not boiling, but when it boils, I'm going to reduce the heat to medium low because I don't want too much water to evaporate. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna prep for the garlic bread. So there are several ways you can address the garlic bread. You can use one long baguette. You can use individual sort of, you know, half baguette, or you can even do smaller uh, individual rolls. I've chosen this type of size because I'm going to be bringing some soup and bread to my kids that are not living here. And this is an easier way for them to just get their own portion. So depending on what you're doing, it's also nicer uh, when you're not doing a bigger loaf, if you want to serve everybody their individual portion to do the smaller ones. But if you want to bring the whole bread on the table um, with some, if you're doing like a dairy meal and you want to bring the whole bread once it's out of the oven with some cheeses on the board or some dried fruits and stuff like that, it's really pretty to show. Um, so for today, <coughs> for my uh, presentation and my use and because I want to send over some to my kids I've chosen this size as opposed to the longer version so I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the garlic bread so I'm going to get another clean cutting board 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to prepare sort of like it's a garlic uh, spread. If you're doing it um, dairy, then you can do like a garlic butter or garlic and herb butter. I'm gonna use margarine today just because I wanna keep my meal or my soup um, uh, parf, uh, but I'm gonna be using um, oil and margarine and uh, crushed garlic and some fresh or dried herbs, depending on what I have on hand. So I do have some um, fresh thyme, which I love. And I also have some uh, dried oregano, dried basil, dried, um, uh, parsley. I'm going to use a combination of all of that. And what you really want is you want about in total, I would say about one and a half to two teaspoons combined of herbs. So it doesn't really matter whether you're doing very finely chopped fresh herbs or if you're doing dried herbs, just try to do a combination about of one and a half to two teaspoons of herbs. So I'm just going to get my dried herbs. There we go. So I'm gonna use the fresh thyme and some dried basil and oregano and some dried parsley. And I have my uh, margarine that I have taken out of the um, fridge and it's soft. So it's gonna be easy to uh, assemble and put together. There we go. I'm just gonna get a bowl to do the spread. So it calls for one stick of margarine or butter. So that's um, eight tablespoons, eight tablespoons. And then it calls for two tablespoons of olive oil. So combine with two tablespoons. And then it's going to be, it calls for five cloves of garlic minced, so I have my garlic already peeled and cleaned. So five, and I'm going to get my garlic press here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with mashing a little bit the margarine and the oil together to already have a little bit of a soft mixture. I like to do this step first before adding the garlic and the herbs. Okay, so once all of this is combined, I'm going to add the crushed garlic. There we go. So those of you who don't like the garlic, just omit that and do a herb dip instead of just for spread, I mean, instead of putting the garlic. If you want just a subtle taste, then reduce the amount of garlic cloves to just one or two, just gives it, or even if you don't want the fresh garlic, put a bit of uh, garlic powder. I know some people don't use fresh garlic, but they like garlic powder. They just don't like, you know, what the garlic, uh, fresh garlic does to their breath or, you know, they don't digest it well, but they do okay with the, um, with the garlic powder. So that's perfectly fine if you want to substitute that. I would put like a half a teaspoon of the garlic powder if I were to uh, eliminate the fresh garlic. Okay, now I'm going to add a bit of fresh herbs. So I said in total, it's about um, one and a half to two teaspoons of any type of combination of herbs that you, um, that you want. Let me see if there's more. Um, so someone told, told us, asked me if it's possible to use mushroom broth instead of water or chicken broth, or would you make it that too mushroomy? So 
Uh, I've never done it with mushroom broth, but I know that some people love to use vegetable broth when they're cooking because it gives a lot of flavor. Um, maybe if you're using a mushroom broth, cut it in half. So instead of doing four cups of uh, water, you do two and two. So two cups of water and two cups of um, mushroom broth. I mean, I haven't used mushroom broth, so I can't really say from experience, but I don't think it would be um, bad at all. Just maybe um, as a test the first time, try to cut uh, with a bit of water. So that would be my advice to you. So again, I'm putting a combination of about one and a half teaspoon of the herbs that I have on hand. So it could be Italian herb, oregano, basil, parsley, thyme, whatever you have. Um, now it calls for um, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Um, I think that in my case, I've put enough of the fresh garlic. I'm not gonna add the garlic powder. I have a nice consistency here. Um, I am gonna add a bit of salt and a bit of uh, fresh brown pepper just for flavor. And I'm going to show you what we do with the bread. This is very easy because while the soup is cooking, you're prepping the side. And when the side is going to be out of the oven, your soup is going to be ready. Don't forget to reduce your heat um, so that your soup is not um, doesn't stick too much. I'll show you. Um, I'm gonna show you right now what this soup looks like, cause it's really, really beautiful. I don't know if everybody can see how gorgeous it is. The flavor, I actually, the smell this time is even nicer than the, than how it looks. It's not the most colorful soup, but it's really tasty. So again, I've added a bit of salt, a bit of freshly ground pepper, all my herbs and fresh garlic and margarine and oil. I'm gonna move to the side uh, some of the things that I have on the counter. I'm gonna bring back the uh, cutting board and I'm gonna show you how I assemble. So I take whatever is bread you're using, but you want sort of a long crusty bread. It um, is better or the outcome is nicer when you're making the garlic bread. I'm gonna use, so what I wanna do is I wanna slice the bread, but not completely down. So I wanna still leave the loaf intact like together but make some slits where we're going to be putting the garlic butter or the garlic margarine inside so as you can see my my loaf is still together but I've made some indentation and I'm going to be putting my garlic butter inside so I now take a spoon or even um, a brush but I like to work with the spoon I take about one teaspoon and I put it inside each of the um, openings. So I'm just going along and um, opening my bread, spreading my teaspoon or a little bit less than a teaspoon. Again, opening the bread, spreading the teaspoon. And I'm gonna do that with every loaf that I'm using. In my case, I have four uh, loaf of bread. And uh, there we go. So I've done my first loaf. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So as you can see, I have all my garlic bread spread in between, my garlic uh, spread in between each of the openings of the bread. And now I'm going to take um, aluminum foil. So I'm going to take foil. This one is done. 
Okay, so I'm gonna take a medium here. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with it. And it's great because it's easy. I know a lot of people buy garlic bread, but when you see how easy it is to prepare, there's no need to buy it. You can make your own. Okay, so let me just put that in the recycling because it's done. And I'm gonna show you what I do. So, I take my um, bread and I wrap it around in foil completely. There we go. And I'm gonna put this on a cookie sheet. All of my loaves like this, or a long one, you take a longer cookie sheet. I'm gonna put all the wrapped loaves, they're gonna go about eight to 10 minutes before I'm ready to serve so that they're hot and piping and everything melted. Now, if you're doing a dairy meal, when you're putting the garlic spread uh, in between the openings, uh, you can add some mozzarella cheese um, to each of those openings. And when you're going to wrap it and bake it, it's gonna melt the cheese and it's gonna be really delicious. Today, I'm not gonna put the cheese because I'm doing a meat recipe and I want my soup to be parved so I can serve it with either um, uh, um, other something else that I'm gonna accompany for it. And today I'm not doing a dairy meal. so. Um, I'm going to finish all of the bread and all the spread, and then I'm going to put it, put it in the um, oven. My soup is continuing to cook really well. And now I'm going to show you how to make a very quick salad dressing that you'll be able to uh, dress any type of salad uh, that you like um, so that you can serve with the garlic bread and the soup. And I find that on a nice winter night, uh, you want something light but still filling that uh, the combination of a nice bowl of soup, a piece of bread and some salad is a perfect meal. So um, that's why I wanted to show you how to make that easy vinaigrette. I show, chose today to make a balsamic vinaigrette uh, because everybody loves uh, balsamic vinegar and most of, the, most of us have it at home. So I'm gonna get a little jar. I love my jars. I always keep some glass jars. That's I use for a lot of dressing my um, uh, salads, but also if I want to mix a, uh, a sauce for a fish or a meat, whatever, I put it in my glass jar first. Now what I use also is if you like it better, I have a couple of those at home. I swear by them because first of all, they have the measurements on the side. So easy for you to add all the ingredients and not have to use your scoops. And then after that, they have a spout. So you can actually just serve and squeeze whatever, how much you want. And then it goes into the fridge. So really very, uh, very practical. So for the uh, salad dressing, we're gonna make, like I said, a balsamic vinaigrette. And I'm going to, you're going to need three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one clove minced garlic. We're going to need a half a cup of olive oil and some salt and pepper. So I'm going to start with half a cup of, um, half a cup of olive oil. So half a cup is about 125 mil. So I'm going to use my um, uh, grater here to know where to stop. So it's about it's about four ounces. Okay. So I've put um, and I like to use I like to start with the olive oil because in that recipe that's the biggest quantity of ingredient you're going to put and the rest is in tablespoons so easy to measure. So again I've put half a cup of olive oil in my measuring uh, container. I'm going to add three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Okay. 
Okay. So three tablespoons. There we go. Let me just clean the sides of the container. So again, I've added three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna add now uh, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. So one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Now you can cut the amount of balsamic vinegar with a bit of uh, lemon juice if you prefer a lighter kind of dressing, but this is going to have a deep, rich, rich uh, flavor and very, very tasty. And then I'm going to add one clove of garlic crushed. So I'm going to use again my garlic crusher. Okay, and I'm gonna put one clove of garlic crushed in there. Okay, I don't know if anybody else has any other questions. I know I've, I think I've answered all the ones that came in. Okay, so I'm adding my one clove of garlic crush. Sometimes I have to use it twice. So in here I have half a cup of olive oil, three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one clove of garlic minced, and I'm gonna use some salt and pepper to taste. Okay, so adjust to your liking for the salt and pepper. Sometimes I find the Dijon mustard is already salty, so I don't use too, too much uh, salt when I'm making the dressing with the Dijon mustard. But the beauty of this container is that all you do is you close it, make sure that it's sealed, mix it, and as you can see, my salad dressing is ready. Two seconds. I didn't have to buy a jar. There's no additive, uh, ad, ad, like a, you know, additional ingredients that I can't read that are found in most of the pre-made um, dressing. It keeps in the uh, fridge. If I'm serving it today, I'm gonna leave it outside so that the oils don't, um, uh, don't harden. And I'm gonna pour whatever I like now, if you don't want to mix the whole salad because you don't want it to wilt or get ruined, you put everybody in a bowl and you put that on the table. They can put as much dressing as they want and then they start to eat and it's great. Actually, this uh, dressing uh, is even great if you want to put on grilled chicken or, um, uh, you know, other proteins if you're serving it with the salad, the mixture and the taste is delicious. So I want to show you one last time my soup and how beautiful it looks. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to plate it. Uh, I'm going to change the view so you can see a little bit better uh, what it looks like. So again, as you can see, it's really beautiful. And uh, I'm going to clean this space and I'm going to show you how I would plate it. So I'm not, I didn't bake the um, um, bread because timing wise today, I think um, it's going to be uh, too hard for me to be able to show you the end product, but I'm going to post a picture of it on Facebook. So fr befriend me, Muriel Suisa, M-U-R-I-E-L Suisa, S-U-I-S-S-A. Friend me on Facebook. Ask me to add 
uh, you as a friend, and then you'll see the end result, and we'll have it on the synagogue uh, Facebook page as well, and on our website. So I normally would add my soup. If you're using dill, you'd put a bit of fresh dill chopped on the top. I'm using um, fresh thyme, so I'm going to put a branch of fresh thyme. You can put also some fresh parsley on the top. But look how beautiful it looks. You can also put, if you're making it dairy, you can put a dollop of sour cream or you can even put some coconut cream at the end drizzled, depending on what you want. A very easy, forgiving uh, recipe that can be uh, changed um, easily. I would serve it again with the garlic bread and a salad and uh, the beautiful dressing that we've made together. And um, once the uh, garlic bread comes out of the oven, unwrap it, put it on a plate and serve it with your soup. So again, in under one hour with all of my chatting, we were able to make um, a, garlic, a garlic bread, uh, wild mushroom soup, and a balsamic uh, vinaigrette that you can keep in the fridge and use all week. And uh, I really hope that you guys get to try all the beautiful recipes we did in the last month. Uh, I'm... Um, I don't know if I'll continue on Zoom, but I'm definitely going to have some uh, cooking demos uh, on Facebook. Uh, so follow me on Facebook Live. I'll post uh, beforehand the dates and the times. I am trying to coordinate something for Purim to show everybody how to make hamantashen and um, uh, to also discuss what we serve in our family uh, traditions for uh, the holiday of Purim and into the preparation for Passover. I'll be uh, showing you um, a little bit uh, of what I do. Um, I, I do know some of you uh, have asked me several times to continue the cooking lessons. Um, it was a little bit challenging uh, for me to get the help and support at the synagogue these days, just because they're short staffed and um, some are working remotely. And so coordinating all the email and the recipes and the downloading of the videos, it does take time. Um, I love to get together with you guys. It was one of the highlights of my week, but uh, we have to probably find um, a way to make it happen in the next little while. That's why I'm suggesting the Facebook Lives. Those are easier to just, um, those are easier to just um, prepare even if it's with short notice. So um, I do know a lot of you are sending me some beautiful love you messages and continue the cooking lessons. I will be in touch, I will connect. Um, look at the synagogue websites, look at my Facebook page continue to follow what Kentu Ben Lolo and me are doing. Uh, we love to connect with the community. We love to see your beautiful faces. Join us next week for um, Purim. We have some exciting programs and, and, um, and um, things happening next week. Um, and again, feel free to send me private message and um, questions that you would have. I'm always accessible, accessible, always here, even if you just wanna have a little chat and uh, connect, I'd love to hear your beautiful faces, your beautiful voices and see your beautiful face, faces uh, again in the near little future. So in the meantime, I send you um, lots of uh, hugs and kisses. I send my prayers that we all continue to keep safe, um, really heartbroken. Um, with the news this week of several younger people in the community that are uh, sick and need our uh, prayers. I'm keeping them in mind, um, 
in my thoughts and when I bake challah and I light my candles. And if you know anybody that is uh, in need of a prayer, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, to Cantor Ben Lolo and to Rabbi Pinto. We're always here uh, to add blessings and prayers and to be there and support you guys uh, throughout this uh, difficult time. Uh, but again, I wanna wish all of you uh, Shabbat Shalom uh, in, um, in, um, in um, a couple of weeks, like I said, we'll be celebrating Purim. So keep a watch out next week for the announcement of all of our programs. And um, in the meantime, keep safe, uh, know that we're here for you. And again, thank you very much for everybody that joined me today. I really appreciate it. Hope you get to cook in your kitchen and try all the beautiful recipes.